This hour, American and coalition forces are in the early stages of military operations to disarm Iraq, to free its people, and to defend the world from grave danger. It's clear to everyone that many problems exist within the Middle East today, be it poverty, oppression, or war. But what are the true underlying causes of these problems? Many Americans today don't fully grasp the history and politics in the Middle East, which have taken place after World War I. A large portion of a class I attended at Oaken University focused on this portion of history. I was amazed and appalled at everything the West has done to the Middle Eastern region and gained a wealth of knowledge on this subject. Starting from the post-World War I era, much of the turmoil and problems today in the Middle East are in fact due to exploitation and heavy intervention from Western powers. In order to understand how the West began to exploit the Middle East, we need to look at the post-World War I treaty known as the Sykes-Picot Agreement. This was a secret treaty between Great Britain and France which split up the Middle East under their control in order to fill the power gap left in the fall of the Ottoman Empire in the region. At the same time period, oil was first beginning to be discovered in Iran. In this discovery, Lenin began to see importance in the Middle Eastern region. The Sykes-Picot Agreement truly marked the beginning of Western exploitation in the Middle East. James Sirowiecki from The New Yorker argues that oil revenues are to the Middle East what heroin is to the junkie. Day to day, shooting up keeps you from feeling sick. Over time, though, it keeps you from being healthy. Sirowiecki goes on to explain that the Middle Eastern countries with high amounts of oil are in fact poor because the countries don't focus on other means of production. In this sense, oil is like the Middle East's heroin. This argument may hold some truth, however, but time and time again, the West has impeded any attempt from Middle Eastern countries to nationalize their own oil resources. One example of this can be seen in the 1950s. Iran finally began to nationalize its own oil resources to create a modernized state under a new ruler. Upon seeing this, the U.S. intervened and overthrew that leader and replaced him with Mohammad Reza, who is pro-U.S. To put this in perspective, this would be equivalent to Russia or something intervening and replacing a progressive U.S. president in order for their own interests. The coup that took place in Iran was an impressive move by the United States in order to hinder the growth of Iran. This proves that countries with oil in the Middle East are most of the time unable to benefit from their own resources in the first place due to Western intervention and dominance. After World War II, a new state was created by Britain in 1948 known as Israel. This state was created around Jerusalem in order to return the European Jews, who had just survived the horrors of the Holocaust, to their religious homeland. This is the justification for the creation of this state. The land was referred to as Palestine before Israel was created. The Palestinians who lived there were forced to give up their homeland to the new Jewish settlers. Over time, Israel continuously took control of more and more land from the Palestinians. Today, the Palestinians are packed tightly in small areas throughout Israel. This map displays the clear aggression of Israel. The loss of land the Palestinians suffered is astounding, and Palestinians are unable to travel from one area they own in Israel to another. One example of an area like this is Gaza, where many Palestinians are actually walled off into a specific area. Unable to effectively revolt against this new powerful nation, the Palestinians are still today being kicked off their land. To this day, there is constant violence and conflict within the region due to the creation of this state. Backed by the West, however, Israel maintains a powerful army and has launched unbelievable amounts of wars against its Arab neighbors. In 1948, Israel was attacked by its Arab neighbors but remained victorious. After this, Israel attacked Egypt in 1956, Syria and Jordan in 67, South Lebanon in 82, Gaza in 2000, Lebanon again in 2008, and Gaza once more in 2009. These wars devastated the surrounding area, leaving most of the Middle East powerless and weak. These wars weakened the region's economies extremely. With the surrounding Arab countries constantly weakened by Israel, there is nobody strong enough to stand up against Israel or anybody or any kind of Western intervention in the Middle East for that matter. In a sense, the West benefits from Israel in this way. Another example of Western exploitation can be seen in the creation of the state of Kuwait. Kuwait is an extremely small country bordering Iraq on the coast of the Persian Gulf. Great Britain created this state for one purpose. Britain blocked Iraqi access to the Persian Gulf by severing the territorial entity, Kuwait, from the rest of Iraq in 1921 and 1922. This new British colony, Kuwait, was given artificial boundaries with no basis in history or geography. This act blatantly shows Western exploitation of the Arab countries. This country merely exists as a tool for the West in order for them to keep Iraq from utilizing ports on the Gulf and to reap the oil that already exists in Kuwait itself. Kuwait has 300 miles of shoreline, while Iraq owns a mere 36 miles along the Gulf, which is shallow water anyway. 
It has been observed that any attempts from Iraq to take back Kuwait have been repelled by the West. An example of this can be seen from Operation Desert Storm in the 1990s, which was launched by President Bush Sr. War and violence was spurred in the region initially due to Western intervention with the creation of Kuwait. By keeping the Arab countries weak, in this case Iraq, the Western countries are able to exploit the region almost unchallenged. But how can the people of America allow this? The land of the free, which is supposed to be supporting democracy and liberty, in fact supports many brutal and backwards regimes throughout the Middle East to further exploitation. How can we be this hypocritical? Since 9-11, a lot of misconceptions in America have been strewn about towards the Arab people. When a select few destroyed two of our towers, it seems as though America needed to point fingers and the whole Arab population has been targeted as the enemy, which we continue to fight today in Afghanistan and Iraq. Jack Shaheen makes a compelling argument in one of his works stating that the image of the Arab is so pervasive that it threatens to engulf public opinion and ultimately influence American foreign policy in the Middle East. This was written in 1985, and it seems as though his idea was correct. Today the U.S. is heavily involved in Middle Eastern affairs, especially after 9-11. Looking specifically at in 2003, the United States invaded Iraq, which had absolutely nothing to do with the Twin Tower attacks. And the American leaders lied to the people to do this. What did Iraq have to do with what? The attack on the World Trade Center. Nothing! Even after President George W. Bush admitted to there being no WMDs or links to Al-Qaeda in Iraq, Apparently, a lot of Americans still approved of the U.S. 2003 invasion. A survey which I conducted concluded these results. 29 out of 63 respondents seem to have approved of the attack on Iraq. This figure is astounding to me, that nearly half of all the respondents had approved of the invasion in some form. So the question that arises now is, why would we support this kind of bloodshed over false allegations? Are we simply that misinformed and misled by our leaders and the media? And are we that misunderstanding of the Arab population as a whole to feel it necessary to go to war with them without true cause? The warnings Jack gave back in his 1985 article seem to have come true in the 21st century. After the attacks of 9-11, the people of America felt angered, vengeful, and most of all scared. The neoconservatives, who can be described as a party which thinks what America does is always right for everyone, and includes people such as Donald Rumsfeld and George W. Bush, gained much influence of the American people from the attacks and in turn publicized the term terrorism to the American public and the rest of the world. The BBC documentary The Power of Nightmares argues that the neoconservatives instilled fear throughout the American people, arguing that there was a global network of terrorism known as Al-Qaeda that was an extremely dangerous and well-mobilized threat to the United States, almost like a nightmare which wasn't real. The documentary proved this claim to be untrue and an extreme overstatement by examining many different aspects such as the falsely accused Al-Qaeda terrorist sleeper cells by Bush, which in fact turned out to be normal Arab American citizens who were falsely charged using ridiculous and simply unbelievable evidence. Yet the American public has apparently bought into this nightmare. In my survey, an overwhelming 80.6% of people thought that Al-Qaeda was indeed a serious threat that is extensively large and organized. This research goes to show the U.S. population doesn't know enough of the truth behind the politics of our involvement in the Middle East. When our leaders aren't straightforward with their wrongful intentions in the Middle East, how are we as a free democratic public supposed to know to oppose them? How are we as the most powerful country in the world going to help with the problems in the Middle East when we are the ones who are causing them in the first place? The Middle East is in shambles and has been for quite some time now due to Western exploitation. Millions of people are surrounded by poverty and political corruption in this region because of the West. Since the end of World War I, the Middle East was seen in the West's eyes as an area wealthy of resources but lacking of regional power. This allowed the West to plant their roots of power in the territory and keep the Arab countries weak in order to reap the resources in the region. The cause of the poverty in the Middle East today can be explained by the exploitation and wars funded and caused by the West. The Middle Eastern countries never had a chance to nationalize their own resources, leaving their economies devastated. Repressive regimes backed by the West, including the United States of America, hold power over the people and land. This prevents the turning of power and keeps the people of the Arab countries powerless. Until the West stops its exploitation on the region, I predict the Middle East will remain an unstable, poor, and dangerous area of the world. Thank you for your time and listening to my presentation.